fall. That's now she didn't fall. But we don't want her to fall. We can't afford to be falling. And we're glad tonight that you're here in the house of the Lord. And we just look forward to the ministry of the Word, that God is good, and He is good all the time. And uh, we ask that if you would stand. Let's look at Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Looking at verse number one. Didn't have everybody time to find a place. Hebrews 11 and 1, starting with, Now faith is, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are, which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And so we find a series of circumstances that people had faith in God and they accomplished great things. And that's what we're going to believe for tonight. Brother Jess, would you take us to the Lord in prayer tonight and ask God to anoint him? Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. <coughs> We're thankful tonight that God is mindful of us. If we've ever had faith tonight, we need to have enduring faith that's not going to waver under circumstances. And if you have an outlook on the world through the eyes of flesh, it can look pretty bad out there. It doesn't look good. It looks uh, very unfavorable for Christians today in our world. We're seeing more and more persecution and opposition, and we see the eroding of Christian values here in America. But I want to say tonight, we have to make up our mind. If we've ever stood for the Lord, we've got to stand for Him today and believe Him that God is going to see us through things that we're going to face we're going to face things, and I, I don't want to be a predictor of bad things, but I want to tell you, when it comes to living for God in a world that has become more and more God-less, we need to be more and more God-full, full of God. And uh, we read things about the apostles that they accomplished, that they did through faith, all through the history of God's people's uh, presence on this earth as far as people that live for him, not for the devil. And long as you're uh, living for the devil, he doesn't bother you too much. I didn't really realize what a devil he was until I started trying to live for God. How many of you found that you're battling the devil more and more? And the more you try to dedicate and consecrate, you've got to have faith that God's going to keep that that you commit into his hands against that day. So there's things that we're going to face, and I'm not here to tell you and try to predict all the things that are going to happen. Everybody's life is different. Everybody's life is different from the aspect of things that God's going to do with you. Each and every one of us are to be a vessel in the hands of God to be used of God and to be sensitive to his spirit, to have faith in God when you don't have faith in anything or anybody else. You believe what I'm telling you today? So if we've ever started out, if we want to be saved, we have to recognize today 
that we've got to maintain our faith, our confidence in God, our relationship with God. While some are waning, we got to be waxing strong in the might and power of the Lord and believe that God's going to keep that we commit into his hands against that day. And so we look at things. Noah was not one that was a man. Uh, I look at Noah, I read all these things about the accomplishment of people in the Word of God. Where Noah was a man, he it was one family in a whole world did not want to believe what he said. But he was faithful to believe in God. He had a relationship with God. And that's where our faith in relation with God is going to keep us. Is that we're going to believe God regardless of the things that we see, we hear, we feel, and we even know. But one thing we must know is God. The devil is real and he is as real as God is, he's not as powerful as God. And if God be for you, who or what can be against you? And they may come against you in ways, but God is going to keep that that we commit into his hands. The power of a sound mind that we can have full of faith and we have promises of God. I've never seen heaven. We like to sing about it. We like to believe about it. And heaven is a reality as much as this world is a reality. By faith, we believe that the world that we know was framed by God. Man, in all of his efforts, has not been able to invent a living plant. He hasn't been able to invent anything that we see that God has made in nature. Man may try to take something that God has made and make a derivative of it, crossbreed things, but man cannot produce life himself. God alone is. So when we realize that God is great and supreme, we shouldn't fear what man can do us do to us, but we should fear that God Fear God that is able to cast body and soul into hell fire. But I believe God today to save my soul. I'm walking with the Lord, not contrary to him. And so today, we need to make up our mind no matter what comes our way, no matter what people do or don't do, that we're going to live for God. And we're going to trust him and believe him. And it says... Here in Hebrews 11, the 6th chapter, but without faith it is impossible to please God. The devil, and I'm not trying to give him glory, no praise, no credit, but I have to recognize that he is a contender for my soul. The devil wants you lost as much as God wants you saved. You believe that? The devil hates you. God loves you. But we have to look and consider uh, how that without faith it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So uh, is there a diligent seeker of the Lord in the house? When things begin to come your way, it is a need to pray more. Praying more at home. Praying more. Pray without ceasing. The Bible tells us as we see that day approaching, the day of the coming of the Lord, that we uh, should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but so much the more we ought to be in God's house. And more and more, and when we look around, so many of our church organization, churches have begun to diminish their services. And so many go through a motion of a service, but folks, 
It's more than just coming and attending and being a spectator. We need to do everything that we can to be a participator, to be involved and seek to add to and add dimension, add worship, add praise. We have to get our souls fed. We need the Word of God linked with the Spirit of God that will give us power to be and to become more than what we've ever been. It's not enough to live on the shallow waters. You take the little minnows that live in the shallow water and they don't feel much of a threat there, but they grow. And as they grow, just like we grow in our relationship with God, we've got to grow in faith. We've got to grow in wisdom and understanding. But we have to have faith. Everything that God has availed to us as a church is there for our success. But without our faith to believe in it and to incorporate it, it's going to do us no good. It's needful today. It says here in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, in the second verse, uh, well, let me catch the first verse. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And it says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners, against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. You know where the fainting of the mind is, where the faith begins to wane. For, uh, for the church to be successful, we've got to maintain and retain and gain more in God. I wish I could tell you it gets easier as we go on, but it doesn't. It gets more difficult. Satan realizes his time is what? Short. So he's fighting with all that he has against those that are the heirs of salvation. We got to fight more. Folks, I'm here to tell you tonight it's going to be worth the effort. Many have started, but many have failed to finish. Many have start, started shy. The race is not to the swiftest, but it's to those that endure to the end. You got to believe in God. You got to believe in God's Word, but you got to believe in yourself that you can accomplish. You can be all that God wants you to be. And every one of us have a different calling in life and the work that God would have us to do. But one thing that we have coming, Brother Mike, is that we have all been called out of this world, called to come out from among the world and be you separate, saith the Lord. And he said, I will receive you unto myself. And that where I am, there ye may be also. So I'm saying to a church, if we've ever gotten a hold of the Word of God and taken the Word of God at faith value, we need to know this Word. If this Word was taken from us, we need to know enough of this Word. David said, I, Thy Word, O God, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we got to see tonight that we can hide the Word of God in our heart. 
We've got to see that the things in this world. I want to say, listen to this. Long as we have faith and obedience to God, long as we're trusting in God, we got to trust in God and not uncertain riches. That song, we sung that for a reason. All those songs were sung for a reason. When you don't have food in your kitchen, if you don't, and, and I've been blessed, I've never worried, and all the years that I've lived for God, I never wondered where the next meal was coming from. But I might find myself there. You might find yourself there. But you've got to believe that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. We've got to believe that God will keep that that we commit into his hand. Everything, not only our soul. God, will you tell your neighbor, God cares about the whole man and the woman and the woman. God cares about everything about us. God will take care of us. He will bless us. Sometimes God will let you and I prove our point of commitment, prove our level of faith in him. He'll put you, hang you out there where you feel like you're hanging out and, and you don't see bottom. We feel pretty good when we feel like we're walking on solid ground and things are good and some, things are solidified and everything looks good, but ever now and then God will change circumstances to let us prove not to him because God knows what's in our heart, but we need to know what's in our heart. We need to know, and sometimes we, uh, we think it's better than it is, but it may not be that good. But we just need to have faith. The trying of your faith work, worketh patience. Then the Bible says, let patience have her perfect work. So faith and patience. Faith is good, but faith for just a little while is not always good enough. You've got to have enduring faith. When things change, when circumstances change in your life, and they do, they do change. But you've got to have patience to believe and have faith that God is going to see you through. He didn't start us out to fail. He didn't start us out to not finish. He endures. His enduring love and care for us is there that God is an ever present help in the time of trouble, in the time of need. God is an ever-present help. You don't see God, but you feel God. We felt him this morning. I wished everybody could be, could have been here this morning. Sister Dawn, did you feel the Holy Ghost back there? Was the distance from the pew? Uh, people talk about this as the spout where the glory comes out. But I want to say, wherever people begin to worship God, whether it's individually or collectively, you can feel God. It's possible for God to be moving in this place in a great way and somebody be in a disconnect because they are lacking faith to believe that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It's not the casual seeker. You might get some things on a casual relationship, but God is wanting us to have a deeper level of faith, trust, and obedience in seeking Him. And you've got to have faith when it seems like everything is going wrong in your life. You ever have a day it seems like everything goes wrong? You, Brother Mac? Woo! 
But do you still believe God that He makes a way where there seems to be no way? We got to keep believing. And, and you got to keep enduring. Whatever happens or does not happen, we got to believe that God's still on the throne. Nothing important has changed. Keep believing God. He's a rewarder. I know I've already said it. He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Sometimes we have to get desperate before God. Sometimes we get very adamant. Sometimes I've seen people beating on the altar. I've seen them beating on things. That doesn't make God hear you. It may show the desperation of your desire to touch God and to be blessed and to be rewarded and to be provided for. But just a calm assurance. It's not the frantic panic. But when we get desperate, we may get a little bit more adamant. But the adamancy must be in the mind, diligently seeking God with our whole heart. It's not the shallow-hearted. It's not the hard-hearted. It's the whole-hearted in faith reaching out to God. My God, Shall This is where we have to have faith for our spiritual needs, our physical needs, our financial needs, our emotional needs. My God, we have to believe this and have faith that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. And that's what we have to look at and see that God will. He said he would, but sometimes we don't see God until we're out and we have exhausted our resources that he's already provided for. Do you see that? I told you all one time about a, a boy that he wrote home from college and and, you know, everything's on a short basis today. Now it's taxing and all that, and everything happened short. And he was at college, and he said uh, 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 to his dad, no mon, no fun, your son. His, his dad said, too bad, how sad, your dad. God is not that way. God's going to provide for our needs. Sometimes some things fall under the category of want. Want. Now God didn't say he's going to supply all of our wants, but we've got to have faith that God is going to supply all of our needs. As this world gets worse and worse, as we progress on in the course of time and the fulfillment of prophetic utterance of God's word that was penned that we have to read, and it says in the Word of God, and there shall be a time of trouble like there's never been since there was a nation. At that time, even at that same time, shall thy people be delivered, whosoever's name is written in the book. The world is not going to get better. That's why I quoted that scripture. How many of you realize I quoted scripture? I didn't make that up. Was that in the book? That's the book. We have to believe the book. I read the back of the book and I want to tell you I believe what it says. The church wins. The first chapter of the Bible, we don't read anything about a devil. The last chapter of the Bible, we don't read anything about a devil. The devil came introduced and was introduced later in the book. And at the end, God's going to take care of him. I want to tell you, God's going to take care of you and I while the world and the devil and all the hell rants and raves 
and tries to destroy you and I, we got to have faith that God is going to keep us. But people say, what about, I know of people that have died for their faith. Well, they will die. But you and I have got to believe that, there are, that God is going to keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on him. I'm not here to uh, make this a, a horror tale or anything, but people have died, and Paul willingly gave his head to be beheaded for the witness of God. To live is Christ, to die is gain. Do you believe that? Do you have faith in that scripture that is gained that if you died for the Lord, there's a martyr's crown, there's a higher level of reward for people that die for the cause of God. I'm not telling you that you are. I'm not telling you that you're not. I'm just telling you and I today that regardless of what happens, don't lose faith in God. In little things, in between things, middle-sized things, big things. Believe in God when all else fails. Things are going to fail. And so we, we have to look at verse number 39 of Hebrews 11, and these all having obtained a good report through faith receive not the promise. Some things that we might not receive some promises as of yet, and some things that we might think we need, God may let us go without them to prove our faith our commitment and devotion to him to prove our point of commitment. Today, that's where you got to have faith that it's going to be all right. You got to believe it's going to be all right. And if he leads you to it, he'll lead you through it. It's how you take it, it's what you make it. And so tonight, with faith in our heart, don't Fear is the opposite of faith. God hasn't given us the spirit of, I'm quoting, how many of you recognize I'm quoting, Brother Matt? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. You got to have a sound mind. God, help me to have a sound mind. There are those that are feeble-minded. But I believe that there is a healing of the feeble mind. And the best way to heal the feeble mind or heal any lacking, any deficit, any deficiency, is to have more faith. Building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. There's so much shallow-hearted prayer in our world today among Christendom. You believe that? I remember, as I've told y'all before, uh, we talked about Vestal Goodman. She wrote a good song, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet Hour of Prayer. And I remember in the Old Testament where they lay between the porch and the altar. That's another thing where we lose our pride. They lay between the porch and the altar and they prayed all night. You call a prayer meeting to most even Pentecostal churches and people are going to draw back. They'd rather play than pray.
But I'm saying this tonight to us, church. Building up our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. How much do I need to pray? I need to pray enough where if I've got doubts about any circumstance that I pray to that there is a spiritual transition, that there is a spiritual implication going on in my mind and in my spirit to where I go from a place of doubt or a place of minimal faith to I maximize the faith that I can have in God to I pray to a point that there is a change and my most holy faith is built up praying in the Holy Ghost. And you know, some of the greatest things that happen in our life, some of the greatest growth, some of the greatest transitions in our life from one level to another level happens when we're alone. And we're depending upon what we do in God. There's nothing wrong with the joint effort of praying collectively as the body of Christ, but we've got to get to a point where we can feel comfortable if we're praying and nobody else is praying. And I'll tell you what God sees in secret. This is really another message in itself. But what God sees in secret, He rewards openly. You believe that? God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him, but He rewards a lot of things that are done in secret where it's not about showboating, it's not about uh, look at me and look at who I am. If I'm anything, I have to believe that I can't be anything in God in and of myself by submission and commission to God, by dedication and consecration. I can grow in the grace, the knowledge, the power, the wisdom, and the understanding of God. I have to believe that I can in God. I am what I am by the grace of God. So there's nothing. Paul said, I have no confidence in the flesh. But I have to have faith that I can pray and God will hear my prayer. I have to not only believe that a lot of people can go through the motion of praying, but do they really believe? Do they really expect and believe and have faith that God is going to hear the prayer of sincerity, hear the prayer of desperation? It's all right. Some people, when things are not going well, it's all right to get desperate before God. People sometimes think if you're appearing like you're desperate, you're, you're lacking faith. You're lacking trust. But I'm telling you, you get desperate before God, the diligent seeker, the one that won't give up. Just like, and I'm going to give you an example. When Jacob was being pursued by his brother Esau that was going to kill him because he beat him out of his birthright, you aware of that story? You aware of that story? Hopefully all of us saw. But Jacob began to pray. He was in a life or death situation. Sometimes we're in a life or death situation in the spiritual realm or even and or the physical. But Jacob began to pray. He began to pray and an angel appeared. And he took a hold of that angel, and he was wrestling with that angel. And you know what he had a determination? He prayed to an angel visited him. I believe it was his prayer that caused God to dispatch the angel. And the angel was coming to bless him. Anybody know what angel means? Messenger. Messenger. 
And he took a hold of that angel, and he wrestled through the night. And the angel, it was getting beginning to uh, become dawn. Not you now. I'm talking about it's becoming daylight. So he began to wrestle with that angel, and in his desperation, he had faith that that angel could give him what he needed because a messenger is one that comes to bring something to you. This was a God-dispatched angel. This wasn't a devil. This wasn't a devilistic angel. This was a God-holy angel that had the capability with, uh, with, with his faith. See, the light come on. That's what God wants us to have come on in our hearts, the light that we need faith to believe God. And we need patience after that we have prayed that we would believe and we would hold on to the promises of God that are yea and amen. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Do we have faith that all means all? We got to believe it in spite of what we feel, in spite of what we see, in spite of what we hear, and in spite of what we know. That's what God wants us to see tonight. And so we realize that we can go from people to people, person to person in the Word of God and see where they all had a struggle, where it would have been easier to doubt. And it was always a situation where when some of the most important things that they needed and we need where it looks doubtful to the flesh whether the answer was going to come or not. And sometimes it looks the darkest before you see the dawning of the light of the revelation and the impartation of God's blessings. Do you see that today? I'm telling the church, keep holding on. Don't lose faith. Don't give up, don't give out, don't give in. You've got to believe that God is a rewarder. And so Joseph, not Joseph, Jacob, Jacob, he kept on wrestling. The angel got desperate. See, Jacob was desperate. How desperate are you in your faith? Sometimes our faith is also, it is, it is, uh, it is evidenced by our determination and the things that we do and how adamant we are, how persistent we are uh, to the extent that we will go in time and through trouble and seemingly going without, that we hang on. And we keep hanging on. You keep believing God to see your why. Sometimes before somebody's converted to the Lord, they get the hardest and the most desperate and, uh, and the most obnoxious. Sometimes things get worse before they get better. And oftentimes the devil's got a hand in the mix. And that's what you've got to see. You've got to believe that in spite of how bad it gets, nothing is impossible for God. All things are possible to them that believe. Sister Corley, I kept believing God we was going to see you get up from that place and be able to be strengthened in God and be back in church. How many of y'all believe that? How many of you believe to see your children be saved? How many of you believe to see anybody saved? How many of you believe that anything you address God in prayer, that whatsoever is not of faith is sin? You've got to believe God. If you're going to address God with it, you must believe that God is and that He that God is and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. A lot of things never come through a casual prayer. 
Sometimes a lot of things never come because anything that's really beneficial, good to you, the devil wants to run interference on you getting it. Still rolling. I'm almost through. But anyway, the thing is, Jacob prevailed. The angel was saying, turn me loose. It's getting daylight. Here's what Jacob said. I will not turn you loose unless you bless me. We can't turn our faith loose. We can't turn our desire for that that we desire and know that we need to have. There's a difference between a want and a need. God didn't say, I'll supply all your wants according to his riches and glory. He said, I'll supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. So if it's a need, you can trust God and believe him. But I want to tell you something. I prayed for a lot of things in my life that I knew weren't a need. And I want to say it. I want to go on record. God does give you some of the wants you want in life. He's not just relegated only to the needs. But he did say he will supply all of your needs. He didn't say he'd supply all of your wants. God will give you a lot of things that can be just not necessary needs. They're luxuries. But he'll reward you according to your faithfulness. Of your heart. Is that what it says? That he would give you the desires of your heart. God won't give you anything that's good for you. I mean bad for you. He's going to give you things that are good for you. That caught you, didn't it? Caught you off guard. God's going to give you the things that are good for you, not bad for you. How many of you are going to give your children something bad? We wouldn't do it because we know that we have their best interest in mind. That's another message in itself. But God has our best interest in mind. And so we got to believe that. So he's going to supply. But Jacob held on when the angel was wanting him to turn loose. But something notable happened. That angel touched him in the hollow of his thigh, and it crippled him. But he still wasn't turned loose. I want to ask you, what does it take to cause you to lose faith in God? That touch that crippled Jacob didn't reduce his faith to believe that that angel could bless him. And he wasn't going to turn loose of him until... He got what he wanted even if the angel was exposed in the daylight. But you know it's possible for an angel to appear and be visible to you and be invisible to everybody else. And it's possible that God can be blessing you and doing something miraculously and you can see it as only a God thing, but somebody else won't argue with you and tell you, Oh, it just happened. That's just coincidental. Listen, the things of God are not accidental. They're not just consequential. They're intentional. Not accidental, incidental. But they are intentional. That God will bless. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. I wonder if we stand tonight. If somebody, somebody could get the Holy Ghost. Somebody may need healing for your body. Somebody may need a financial blessing. Somebody may need a spiritual blessing. I want to tell you, if it's big enough to concern you, it's big enough to concern God. Is there anybody tonight that needs prayer? This church, we will pray for you. If you want us to pray, God will make a way. God opens doors where the, uh, they seem to be closed, and God closes doors that need to be closed. 
God has a way. When one door closes in your life, God's going to open another door. It may be his will for things to change. Somebody can get the Holy Ghost tonight. Somebody can get anything you need. Whatever, if it's big enough to concern you, it's big enough to concern God. Does anybody need prayer tonight? Does anybody need anything at all that you want this church to pray with you for? The power of 